million people in Southern California are under flash flood warnings as a major tropical storm drives torrential rain across the region. Water has overwhelmed draining systems and spilled across highways from San Diego to Los Angeles. South Africa's president, Cyril Ramaphosa, has reiterated that his country will not be drawn into global power dynamics. Mr. Ramaphosa's televised address came ahead of a meeting of the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Polls have closed in Ecuador's presidential and legislative elections. The country's electoral commission has begun to pass off peacefully, despite the run-up to the elections being marked by violence. Guatemala will also vote in today. The country is holding a presidential runoff election, and the opinion poll put Bernardo Arevalo in the lead, despite repeated official attempts to bar him. Officials in the Democratic Republic of Congo say six children have died in the broke out of the camp of people displaced by flooding earlier this year. Four adults are being treated in hospital for burns. The regional administrator for the eastern region of Kalehe said the children were all under five years old. The American film director Paul Feig has paid tribute to a woman murdered in California on Friday during a dispute over the rainbow flag displayed outside her shop. Mr. Feig, best known for blockbuster films including Bridesmaids and Ghostbusters, described Laura Ann Carlton as a wonderful friend. The captain of Spain's football team, who scored her country's winning goal in the Women's World Cup final on Sunday, was told after the game that her father had died. Olga Carmona scored the only goal as Spain beat England to claim the trophy. BBC News. So, how did it happen? Well, actually, that's a really important question. The two countries were essentially enemies. That is, of course, an allegation that has been levelled. Everybody had a different definition of what the problem was. Let's remember the background of all these... This is the explanation from the BBC World Service. I'm Claire Graham, and with the help of my BBC colleagues around the world, I'll be trying to get a better understanding of the stories that matter to all of us. In this episode, Kosovo, a contested country. Can ethnic Serbians and ethnic Albanians ever live together in peace? I'm joined by Alexander Miladinovic, a senior journalist with the BBC's Belgrade Bureau. Alexander, well, thanks for joining us on the explanation. I think we should just begin by explaining where Kosovo is geographically and the mix of ethnic groups that live there. Well, if you take a look at the map of uh, the Balkan Peninsula, so southeast part of Europe, you will see Kosovo in the heart of it, surrounded by only other states with not too many borders. So the Kosovo conflict is one of those dating back to the 90s, when a socialist federative republic of Yugoslavia dissolved into republics of Kosovo. And Kosovo was the autonomous province of one of the republics of Serbia, the history of the dispute is a few decades long and it's far from being resolved. And the main reason for the long time dispute is the ethnic composition and also the distribution of territories within Kosovo, as it is today. Around 90 or more than 90 percent of Kosovo population is made of Kosovo Albanians, six to eight percent are Kosovo Serbs. However, it didn't look like that 20 or 30 years ago. There were at least two-digit number of Kosovo Serbs, but the ethnic composition of Kosovo changed significantly after the wars in the 1990s. What was the context of that time, and what happened during that time? When we are talking about the wars in uh, Yugoslavia, people will tell you that it all started in Kosovo and it all ended in Kosovo. It started in the late 80s with a lot of protests, gatherings of Kosovo Albanians claiming real autonomy from Serbia, as Kosovo was at that time an autonomous province of Serbia, one of the republics of former Yugoslavia. The crisis is ethnic, economic and political. The spark came in the far south, in the province of Kosovo. It's an area next door to Albania and is dominated by people who call themselves and speak Albanian. In the streets, some of the elderly Albanian men can be spotted in their white caps. Though the Serbs are Yugoslavia's largest ethnic group, 
in this little province, they're the smallest, and they feel threatened. Their source of hope is Slobodan Milosevic, the Serbian leader, a blunt campaigner for his countrymen in Kosovo. He's made their cause a rallying cry for Serbian nationalism, and many say for his own ends as well. The attention shifted to the other Yugoslav republics in the 1990s, most notably Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, which fought a war for independence in the 1990s, eventually becoming independent countries by 1995. Then the attention shifted back to Kosovo, where Kosovo Albanians wanted the autonomy and then the independent republic, while Serbia used all of its power, mainly army and police power, to suppress the independence movement and to also threaten the local Albanians and try to keep Kosovo as the autonomous province. That all resulted in a war at the end of 1990s, which then uh, led to a NATO bombing in 1999. The NATO campaign was targeted at protecting uh, human rights and protecting Albanian civilians from being threatened by Serbian police and army, who tried to also suppress the military group of uh, Kosovo Liberation Army. So in a 78-day long bombing of Serbia at that time. The NATO-led campaign was conducted in order to prevent a humanitarian disaster after several thousand Albanians were forced to leave their homes in Kosovo by the Serbian security forces.